The question was, what haven't you done yet in your 60 years? What do you want to do for your 60th birthday mm -hmm. that you haven't done yet? Somehow, I said, I want to swim across the lake. Right. And you said, I'll, I'll do that with you. Then I said to you, you know, do you think we could get some other women in town to do it with us and make it a benefit? Right. And then I said to you, for hospice care. Well, the first year I remember when we, we all went across on the boat, the dinner yeah. boat. Yeah. And there was really no organization. There it were no stopped. pods or at the beginning. There were no pods. Right. And everyone said, well, now jump. And we all jump. I think one reason that the swim has become so successful and has raised so much money is because it turned out many, many women in Ithaca wanted to swim across the lake but didn't know how to do it. And once uh, our pod master, Jane Powers, mm -hmm. started setting up the pods, which were really friendship groups, mm -hmm. I think it became much more successful mm -hmm. because people were able to swim with their swim friends. With their friends. Yeah. I was able to kind of sort people according to who they wanted to swim with, how fast they swam, trying to take into account as much as possible to meet the needs of the swimmers. But the important thing about the pods were that there was kind of like an identity and a sisterhood of swimmers is what we refer to it as that this whole event has evolved into. Now this is my parents' stone, Betty and Jack Whitman, uh, reunited in room five forever together. My dad always went by Jake, so we're Jake's girls. And be a 20th year swimming for them. Swimming was always an important thing to my parents, so it, it's, it's always cool. We get in, um, my daughters now both do it with me. One's been doing it, it's her 19th year, and the other one I think it's her 12th year. So we're in there, and it's not a race, we just swim, and we sing, and our, my husband kayaks, my friends kayak. It's something about being in the water, and. You know, you're looking up at the sky and, we, you know, I say, oh, Grandma and Grandpa would be loving this. We're Jake's girls, we're a team, my, my daughters and I. Music was a really important part of the swim to me. Mm -hmm. We've had the yard varks every year playing. Right. So as you're swimming towards shore, you Absolutely. Hear That's always a marker you, for yeah, you. You, you know, know, you're getting close. Music and a bagel. Yeah. <laughs> I see the name of someone written on their arm or on their shoulder. I see women swimming against all odds with handicaps. They're all in it. And so when the hospice care facility decided that anyone could join, I thought I would just try to ride my bicycle from my farmhouse in Etna to this facility. The hardest part of our journey in life is to go from a place of fear to a place of love. That's at the center of what hospice care does, but we can't do it alone. And everyone who swims, everyone who holds a clipboard, who walks, who runs, is in a way helping all the people that we serve move from fear to love because we know we're not isolated. And so what I would say to the volunteers 20 years ago who created Women's Swimming, or the volunteers 10 minutes ago who helped make this Women's Swimming possible, the reality is that we wouldn't be able to do the services that we do without you. And thank you. As a bereavement counselor, one of the things that we talk about a lot is uh, the idea of the importance of rituals, how it's really important to find ways to meaningfully honor and remember our loved ones who've died, and that that is part of the healing process. This organization has been a, a crucial part of the community and the last 20 years of Women's Swimming has especially helped us to thrive. I think it's also important to note that just a couple of people coming up with an idea can make such a huge difference. I believe it was just two friends that were talking about this idea and look what it's become. 300 plus people swimming across the lake, you know, raising almost half a million dollars a year.